In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this rack for my bike to carry a jacket. I made it on my 3D printer and uh, watched the rest of the video to see how. I wanted my rack to install without needing any tools, so I designed this latch mechanism that secures it tightly. And it only needs a couple seconds to install and remove. There are two latches that clamp the rack onto the seat post. You can buy saddlebags in the store, but almost all of them attach to the seat as well as the seat post. And because I have a suspension seat post, the seat moves relative to the post, making it incompatible with most of the saddlebags on the market. Also, most of those bags won't carry a full-size down jacket. I stuffed my down jacket into this two and a half liter stuff sack. And I'm using an 18 inch Velcro strap to hold everything down. For the interior dimensions, the longest point is 25 centimeters and the width and height are 11 centimeters and that adds up to about three liters of capacity. It's just big enough to fit my old 3D printed rack inside. I used Fusion 360 to design this model. I started the design by modeling the seat post, which was a 27.2 millimeter diameter. And I designed a clamp mechanism that's kind of a Desteco style over center toggle clamp. This final piece needs to be really rigid because if it bends at all, the latch could come undone because it might bend past the over center threshold for keeping it latched. So for this reason, I have a plate on the top and bottom that connect the two hinge points in tension and reduce the bending load in the latch. This final piece in the middle is in pure compression when the latch is closed and I can change the length of that to account for different diameters of seat posts. So now we have a completed latch. I added a second one and bridged them together. I sketched out a box that would be roughly the size to hold my jacket. I have it at an angle to match the seat post angle, and I added an extra 10 degree incline so that stuff would be less likely to fall out. I'm using the loft command to connect the latch to the box, and then rounding off the sharp corners with the fillet tool. I'm using the shell tool to convert my solid block into a thin shell with a four millimeter wall thickness. I cut the roof off, rounded off all the corners, and added the slots for my Velcro straps. And with those final touches, this is a model ready to print. I wanted to show you that compression piece again because that's what you'll adjust to make the fit tighter or looser around your seat post. This is the orientation that I printed the part. I wanted the latches to be the strongest part so I printed that flat and the rest of the part is kind of hanging in midair but it's still printed okay. The layer lines look a little worse on the unsupported end of the model but I think it looks okay still. I use tree supports to support printing the hinge but the slots for the velcro straps didn't need tree supports because they're printed at an angle. These are all the 3D printed parts and I'm using five millimeter stainless steel pins for the hinges. If the pins are too tight you might ream the holes with a five millimeter drill bit or use some parallel jaws to press them in. If the fit's too tight the model might crack so you just need it tight enough so the pins don't fall out. This is the first rack that I made. I made it on the A1 mini so this is the largest rack I could fit on that small bed size. And I really didn't like having to use a tool to remove all the screws. The new rack is larger and goes on in a snap. Oh, there's an extra tree hiding in there. Factoring the risks of having this thing break and potentially causing an accident, I printed this extra thick with six wall loops. It's pretty much printed completely solid. There is a weight penalty. It's weighing 440 grams compared to 170 grams for my previous model, which was printed with only two layers and optimized to be light. I do have a Velcro strap here tethered. Uh, just in case this thing breaks off, it won't cause an accident. If you're interested in printing one of these, let me know. I was thinking about putting it on Maker World for people to download. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below. And thanks again for watching.